Chapter 5, The Festival of Merit With their team's name decided, the scavengers spend some time waiting around, while crowds of people assemble. Some of the people are clearly just spectators, while others are other teams participating in the festival. A boisterous atmosphere builds over the crowd of people as excitement of the upcoming festival begins to build. Elder Colby Kaz waits nearby, and as he steps up onto the stage, the crowd begins to quieten down and when he is confident he has everyone's attention, the elder shouts, Welcome! Welcome to our annual festival of merit everyone! We have four teams entered this year, and fifteen events for you to enjoy, as we determine which two teams will go on to the final event. If everyone makes their way to the Helter Skelter, we will start the first event. The Pillars of Heaven When the scavengers arrive, they see that there are two sets of pillars opposite each other. Each pillar set has chains hanging between them. When all four teams have arrived, Elder Colbuk has smiles at them, please select one member of your team. As with all events the rules will be explained once each team has selected its competitor. Dolana looks at the pillars, what do you think the event is? Clayda thinks for a moment, how about we look at who the other teams enter and pick according to who they select. As they watch the other teams, they see a team of three goblins, who obviously enter a goblin, a team with two drow and an orc, who enter the orc, and the last team that consists of a water genesee, a goblin, a drow, a human and the member they enter into the event, a large ogre. Dolana and Clayda both look at Kadric as they both say, it looks like an event of strength. The scavengers enter Kadric into the event. Once the four contestants have been selected, Elder Kolbukas shouts, this event will start with semifinals and the winners will go on to participate in a final, to determine the overall winner. The first semi-final will be Kadric from the scavengers, against Maggie of the Stars of Katha. The second semi-final will be, Naghat from the Dogs of War against Kyles of the Jig Outlaws. As Kadric and Maggie the Ogre approach Kadric shakes his head, why the Ogre? Elder Kolbukas explains the rules, each contestant will be between the pillars holding the chains. The pillars then will be tipped so the chains are supporting all the weight. Whoever keeps hold of the chains the longest wins. When both Kadric and Maggie signal they are ready, the crowd count down. 3. 2. 1. Go. The pillars are then tipped. As Kadric struggles to hold the weight of the pillars, he looks up towards Maggie who towers over him. The paladin notices the ogre looking down at him and determines two things about her, she is also struggling to hold the weight, and as Kadric looks her in the eyes, he sees an intelligence he was not expecting. Moments after his revelation, Kadric can no longer hold on and his pillars make a thud as they hit the floor, closely followed by Maggie's pillars. Elder Kolbukaz, shouts, the winner Maggie of the Stars of Katha. Now for the second semi-final. The pillars are reset and Naghat the Orc and Kyles the Goblin, take their position and the crowd count down again. 3. 2. 1. Go. The second the pillars are tilted, Kyles can't hold on and his pillars thud to the ground. Elder Kolbukaz shouts, the winner Naghat of the Dogs of War. Now for the final. The pillars are reset, and Maggie and Naghat take their position and the crowd count down for the last time. 3. 2. 1. Go. The pillars are tilted and Maggie and Naghat struggle to hold the weight. Beads of sweat drip down their faces as they turn bright red with effort. Thud. Naghat's pillars hit the floor shortly followed by Maggie's. Elder Kolbukaz, shouts. The winner Maggie of the Stars of Katha. Maggie is invited onto a nearby stage to receive her prize, the Medal of Toughness, a medal shaped like a pillar with a ribbon going through the top. The crowd cheer, and when they settle down Elder Kolbukaz shouts, make your way to the rice fields for the next event. The wet works. As the scavengers make their way to the rice fields that they had spent over an hour in the previous day, they see that parts of it have been cordoned off. The two goblins from the day before sit in their chairs surrounded by crowds of people. While they wait for everyone to arrive, Clayda approaches the two goblins and smiles, 
as we saved your behinds yesterday, can you give us a tip for what the event is? The goblins shake their heads and one says, no, we are under strict orders not to say anything until all the teams have selected their contestant. The other smiles, the strictest of orders. Clada returns to his companions and sighs, no clue what this event is. Who wants to do it? Dolana nods her head, I will. When all four teams have selected who is taking part, one of the goblins stands on his chair, the wet walks will have two semi-finals followed by a final between the winners. The first semi-final will be between Dolana of the Scavengers and Lord of the Jig Outlaws. The second will be between Maggie of the Stars of Katha and Amalvin of the Dogs of War. The second goblin then stands and shouts, first team to harvest the rice wins. Simple cut the rice, gather it up, move on to the next section and repeat until you cross the finish line. When Dolana and the Goblin Lord are ready the crowd count down. 3. 2. 1. Go. Dolana swings her sickle and cuts down the rice, and gathers it up before she moves to the next section and repeats. As she cuts down some rice the monk sees the finish line, but hears a cheer from the crowd as Lord crosses the finish line. The second semi-final is over much quicker, and the drow Amalvin wins by a comfortable margin as picking the rice up proved difficult for the ogre Maggie. The final is a good race and Lord puts up a much better effort than Maggie, but is slightly edged out by Amalvin. The two goblins hosting the event get the crowd's attention, and one of them shouts, the winner of the wet walks, Amalvin of the Dogs of War. The other goblin presents the drow with a medal of the wetlands. A medal shaped like a bundle of rice with a ribbon going through it. After Amalvin receives his prize, one of the goblins shouts, make your way back to outside the Temple of the Luxon for the next event, the Test of Wit. When they arrive at the Temple of the Luxon the scavengers see that three tables have been set up. One holds a wooden box, the second displays a glittering star map of the Exandrian sky, and on the third rests a row of coloured bottles. Elder Cass stands beside the tables and smiles at the teams, please select your competitor to test their wit. Clader smiles at his companions, you have both done an event, and this one seems like a good one for me. Cadric nods, it does indeed. Clader steps forward and is joined by Amalvin and Kyos, who have participated in previous events, and the drow from the Stars of Katha. When the four participants are ready, Elder Cass shouts, solve the most riddles the quickest to win. So that no one person has an advantage, the participants not taking part are to wait in the temple. I will also ask for complete silence from the crowd. The first contestant will be Galsriad of the Stars of Katha. Clada walks off to wait in the temple, and a few minutes later he is summoned outside to test his wit. On the first table is a box and four metal keys, written on a piece of paper beside them is. Bronze, copper, silver, gold. Ancient ones from tales of old. Match the key to the box's lock. A mistaken choice begets a shock. Clada inspects the keys, one is bronze, one copper, one silver and one gold. The wizard realizes that he needs to work out. What material is connected to the box? As he looks at the box Clader begins to think about electricity, and notices that the lock is shaped like a dragon, with a fluted crest and the edges of the box are decorated with pearls and shells. After a moment, Clader realizes that he needs to determine what metallic dragon the box represents, and remembers that bronze dragons have a lightning breath and a fluted crest. Clader picks the bronze key up and cautiously puts it in the lock and turns it. Clader sighs noticeably, as he lets out the breath he did not realize he was holding, as the box's lid pops open. Elder Cass smiles, well done, now for the second riddle. Clader moves to the second table, and sees that the star map depicts the moons and constellations visible in the Exandrian night sky, and is accompanied by a piece of paper. Two birds sit in a speckled field. One silver and calm, one scarlet with woe. Night all year, the red one yields. To Silver's illusions, mischief, and sheltering glow. Clader thinks for a moment, and realizes the riddle has to do with Exandria's moons, 
recognizing that the second line refers to the superstitions surrounding Ruidus, and the last line referring to the divine portfolio of Sihanin the Moon Weaver. As he looks at the star map Clader realizes, he has to point to the two moons. He looks the map up and down before pointing to the two moons, and shakes his head as the search took longer than it should have. Elder Kaz nods, well done, now for the final riddle. On the third table is a row of seven small bottles filled with colored liquids, with a piece of paper beside them. Two of us are brewed from blight. And always sat to purple's right. Three are juice, one burns like flame. And no two colors taste the same. Even flasks hold naught but pain. And shade of sky will leave a stain. Though tasty are those at each end. Neither is the winner's friend. A puzzle for the keen and wise. Drink the light to claim your prize. Clader looks at the bottles, as he goes through each line of the puzzle, ruling bottles out and then picks the fifth bottle up and drinks its contents. It is a tasteless potion, that has a warm feel as it settles in the wizard's stomach. Elder Kaz nods, well done. Now go and stand with Galsriad while the rest of the participants solve the riddles. As Clader approaches Galsriad, the drow smiles, as he whispers, your cunning is a cut above that of everyone else in this backwater. I hope to test my wits against you again in the grand finale. Clader whispers back, I hope to as well. While the two whisper, their attention is suddenly drawn to Kyos, as he puts the gold key into the lock on the box, and is zapped by electricity. The goblin then puts the key down and picks the silver one up, to much the same result. Next the goblin picks the golden key up again, and tries to jump as he turns the key, but the jump does not prevent him getting zapped again. The goblin then picks the copper key up, and collapses unconscious to the floor as he is zapped again. While Kyos is taken away for medical attention, Amalvin begins his attempt at the riddles. Solving the box one first attempt but screaming in rage as he is unable to solve the second riddle. Once the drow quits. Elder Kaz shouts, well done to all the participants. The winner of this event is Clader of the Scavengers. Clader is presented with a medal of wit, which is a medal shaped like the head of a fox with a ribbon through it. The wizard notices that the medal has magical properties. Once the crowd begins to quieten down, Elder Kaz shouts, on to the next event. Can everyone make their way to Beef Slab Butchers for a call to arms? As they make their way to the butchers Dolana smiles, do you think it will be a fight? If so, I say Kadric should take part. Clader nods, could be, but why the butcher? We had a drinking contest there yesterday, there was nowhere to fight. As they approach the butchers, they see a small table with a chair either side, and Dolana and Clader smile at each other, as they both say, arm wrestling. Kadric nods and agrees when it is suggested he enters. Once everyone has assembled, Vars the goblin butcher shouts, can the participant of each team step forward? Kadric sighs, as he sees Maggie and Naghat step forward, followed by Lord, who does not worry the paladin. When the four step forward Vars nods, before shouting, this event is arm wrestling. There will be two matches and the winner of each will go on to the final. The first match is Kadric of the Scavengers against Lord of the Jig Outlaws. The second match will be Maggie of the Stars of Katha against Naghat of the Dogs of War. Kadric sits at the table and Lord sits opposite him. When they are both ready the crowd counts down. 3. 2. 1. Go. As soon as the contest begins, the back of Lord's hand hits the table, and Vars shouts, Kadric wins. The second match is much closer, but Maggie proves stronger than Naghat and when the Orc's hand hits the table, Vars shouts, Maggie wins. When both contestants are ready for the final the crowd counts down. 3. 2. 1. Go. Maggie and Kadric are quite evenly matched, and their hands go back and forth before Maggie's hand finally hits the table. Vars shouts, the winner is Kadric of the Scavengers. Kadric is presented with a medal of muscle. A medal shaped like a flexing arm with a bulging bicep with a ribbon going through the shoulder. 
Like Clader's medal this one is also magical. The crowd start a chant, Cadric. Cadric the strong. Cadric goes quite red with the chant, and is relieved when the crowd finish chanting, and Vars shouts, make your way to the hill outside the jumble, for the next event downhill turtles. As the scavengers make their way to the hill outside of Jigal, they wonder what the next event could be, and it becomes clear as they approach the hill, as there is a race course marked out and four large horizon back tortoises, are lined up at the start line. Clader shakes his head, no way am I getting on the back of one of them again. Cadric laughs, you were fine when you were on their back, it was when you were standing in front of them, that you had issues. Dolana smiles, don't worry I will do this event. You have both won, I have not yet and have a good feeling about this one. When they get to the start line, they see an orc, Elder Ushru who is in charge of the race. The orc smiles as the teams approach, please select your participant and then the rest of you move to safety. Dolana finds herself standing with Galsriad, and two participants who have not taken part in any events so far, one a drow and the other a goblin. Elder Ushru takes their names and directs each participant to a tortoise, before turning his attention to the crowd, this event is simple, ride a tortoise from the top of the hill to the bottom. The first to cross the line while still on the head of their tortoise wins. Your contestants are Dolana from the Scavengers, Galsriad from the Stars of Katha, Haddon from the Dogs of War and Ux from the Jig Outlaws. When everyone is ready and sitting on the head of a tortoise the crowd begin the countdown. 3. 2. 1. And go. The four giant horizon back tortoises lumber forward, Ux takes an early lead closely followed by Galsriad. Dolana is not far behind them, but Haddon has terrible trouble keeping his tortoise going forward. As they approach the halfway point Haddon is still in last place, but is not far behind Ux. At the front Dolana has a large lead over Galsriad. Dolana maintains her lead to the finish line, and is first to cross the line, moments later followed by Haddon, who comes in second. It is unknown who finished last but as it did not matter, Elder Ushru just called it a tie between Galsriad and Ux. Elder Ushru shouts, the winner is Dolana of the Scavengers. Dolana is presented with the medal of the jockey. A medal shaped like a person sitting on the head of a horizon back tortoise. Like all the other medals that can be won, this one is also magical. After a moment of celebration, Elder Ushru shouts, the next event on target is at the Helter Skelter. Everyone makes their way to the Helter Skelter, and see that some targets have been set up at one end. Cadric looks and smiles, must be the archery contest. The paladin was correct, and Clader entered along with the Malvin, Lord, and the Water Genesee from the Stars of Katha, who had not took part in any events so far. When everyone had gathered, Elder Kaz shouts, Welcome to the archery contest. All contestants will shoot three arrows from the first line, and then move back to the second line and shoot three more. Points are awarded for each hit on the target, and the closer to the center the more points the arrow is worth. Our contestants are Clader of the Scavengers, Amalvin of the Dogs of War, Lord of the Jig Outlaws and Io of the Stars of Katha. All participants may fire at will. Clader shoots his three arrows and hits the black ring for three points, the white ring for one point and the red ring for seven points, giving him a score of eleven. Amalvin shoots his three arrows. The first two miss but his third arrow is a bullseye for ten points. Lord shoots his three arrows. The first hits the blue ring for five points, the second is a bullseye for ten points and the last hits the black ring for three points, giving him a score of eighteen. Io shoots her three arrows. The first two are bullseyes for ten points each. The third arrow narrowly misses a bullseye, and hits the yellow ring for nine points, giving Io a score of twenty-nine and a commanding lead. The contestants move back over to the second line, and are now about two hundred feet away from the targets. A considerably harder shot than previously. Clader shoots his first arrow and almost misses the target, but hits the white ring for one point. A Malvin misses the target. Lord manages to hit the bullseye for 10 points, and as Io misses, Lord is now only one point off the lead. 
Clader shoots his second arrow and misses the target. A Malvin also misses. Lord shoots his second arrow and hits the blue ring for five points. Io also hits the blue ring for five points maintaining her one-point lead, going into the final shot. Clader and a Malvin both miss with their final arrows. Lord shoots and hits the blue ring again for five points. Io takes a deep breath before shooting her final arrow, and hits the red ring for seven points, meaning she wins by three points. When the crowd has finished cheering, Elder Kaz shouts, the winner is Io of the Stars of Kaffa. Io is presented with the Medal of the Archer. A medal shaped like a target with an arrow in it. Elder Kaz shouts, the next event is called One Shot Solution. Can everyone make their way to the maze? As everyone approaches the now finished maze, Dolana smiles as she remembers how easy it was to find the center of it the day before, I will do this one. Sharpwatch, the Arakokra is in charge of this event and shouts, can one member of each team come forward to enter the maze? The four contestants who stand ready to enter the maze are, Dolana, Haddon, UX and Maggie. However, Sharpwatch looks at the ogre and sighs, unfortunately you are too big for this event. Maggie is disappointed she is too big to take part in this challenge, so the goblin member of her team is entered, after the ogre whispers in his ear. Sharpwatch then shouts, greetings everyone. Taking part in this event is Dolana of the Scavengers, Haddon of the Dogs of War, UX of the Jig Outlaws and Dermot of the Stars of Kaffa. Whoever gets to the center of the maze in the quickest time wins. However, if you find yourself in a dead end, you are out. The contestants then study the maze, and work out what they think is the correct route. They are then free to enter the maze. Dolana is confident the layout has not changed much from the day before, but as she walks through the maze, she sees a dead end up ahead. Realizing she is out if she gets to the dead end, Dolana tries to disguise that she was heading into a dead end, but she has already been spotted by Sharpwatch who swept down and picked the monk up, and took her clear of the maze. The only one to make it to the center is Dermot and Sharpwatch shouts, the winner of this event is Dermot of the Stars of Kaffa. Dermot is presented with the Medal of the Maze. A round medal with a labyrinthine pattern carved into the front of it. Sharpwatch then shouts, the next event is the Crane Stance, and is back at the Helter Skelter. Everyone makes their way to the Helter Skelter, and on the way Dolana smiles, if the crane stance is what I think it is, the stance is something I have trained in. Clader smiles, then you should be the one to do it. Kadrick nods, I agree. When they get to the Helter Skelter Haddon and Kyos are waiting beside Elder Kaz, along with the human from the Stars of Kaffa. Dolana joins them and smiles as she approaches. Elder Kaz shouts, for this event participants will take part in a semi-final where they have to maintain a crane stance the longest. The winner of each semi-final face-off in a final. The participants are Dolana of the Scavengers, Haddon of the Dogs of War, Kyos of the Jig Outlaws and Irvin of the Stars of Kaffa. The crane stance is what Dolana was expecting, and she faces off in the first semi-easily beating Haddon. The other semi-final is also one-sided and Kyos wins. The final begins and Dolana and Kyos each maintain the stance for a long time, a true testament to their ability to balance on one foot, but the small goblin manages to outlast the dwarf and wins. Kyos is clearly in shock as Elder Kaz shouts, the winner is Kyos of the Jig Outlaws. As Elder Kaz presents the still-shocked goblin with his medal, the crowd chant, Kyos. 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 The goblin Kyos receives the Medal of Balance. A medal carved to resemble a crane standing on one leg. Elder Kaz smiles noticeably as he shouts, the next event is the mud run and is to the north of the jumble. The jig outlaws all begin hugging each other and as Kyos rejoins them and Lord smiles, well done Kyos. How many years have we been doing this without a win? Everyone makes their way to the north of Jigal, and see a very muddy assault course is set up, and Elder Ushru is waiting patiently for the participants from each team to go to him. Clada looks at the assault course, Kadrick are you good at this sort of thing? Kadrick shrugs, I don't know. How about you Dolana? 
Though Lana shakes her head, I only have one event left, unless something I'm obviously good at comes up, I will sit out until the dance-off. Kadrick sighs, then I guess it's up to me. As Kadrick approaches the start line he sees Irvin and Haddon waiting for him. The three are waiting around for a few minutes before the Jig Outlaws finally show up, and UX heads their way a huge smile on his face. When the four participants are ready, Elder Ushru shouts, this is the mud run. The first to the end of the assault course wins. Taking part are Kadrick from the Scavengers, Haddon from the Dogs of War, UX from the Jig Outlaws and Irvin from the Stars of Kaffir. Can everyone count them down? The crowd begin to shout. Three. Two. One. And go. Kadrick and UX reach the top of the first obstacle, a large cargo net at the same time, closely followed by Irvin. Quite a bit behind them is Haddon. By the halfway point of the course, UX and Irvin are necking neck with Kadrick and Haddon a few seconds behind them. Kadrick with a slight lead over the drow. As they approach the final obstacle, Haddon has a clear lead. With Irvin closely followed by UX trying to close the distance. Kadrick is starting to struggle to keep up with the others. The final obstacle is the hardest one, as the participants have to run up a curved wall, slick with mud, and reaching the finish line at the top, seems an impossible task. Irvin manages to get to the top and wins, followed by UX and then Kadrick. Haddon gives in, realizing he is never going to make it to the top after his third failed attempt. Elder Ushru shouts, the winner is Irvin of the Stars of Kaffir. Irvin is presented with the Medal of the Mudder. The medal is not a medal but a headband. After the crowd cheer, impressed with everyone's efforts on a difficult course, Elder Ushru smiles, the next event will give us all the chance to have a break. Well, other than the participants, who will be running laps of the town, for a few hours, as the next event is the marathon. If everyone could make their way to the start line at the rice fields. Everyone makes their way to the rice fields where the two goblins sit in their chairs, but this time the chairs have been turned away from the rice fields, and towards a start line. One of the goblins stands up on his chair and shouts, can we have one participant from each team? Dolana smiles, well this is not the dance-off, so it's between you two. Clader shakes his head, I can't run much and I don't have dwarven endurance. Kadrick sighs, then I guess it's up to me. As Kadrick approaches the start line he is joined by Maggie, Naghat and Lord. When the participants are ready at the start line, one of the goblins shouts, please make sure you have a drink after each lap. The other goblin shouts, with the safety talk out of the way, this is a long race, and I will be counting everyone as they pass me, and will let them know when they are on the final lap. Everyone in the crowd is free to go for a rest in other parts of the town, but I encourage you all to spend some time here cheering the participants on, as this is not going to be easy, or fun for them. The first goblin smiles as he shouts, stop being so dramatic, of course it is going to be fun, as they are going to get the biggest cheer they have heard after each of the six laps. Please give a cheer for the participants who are Kadrick of the Scavengers, Naghat of the Dogs of War, Lord of the Jig Outlaws and Maggie of the Stars of Kaffir. After a loud cheer from the crowd, the second goblin shouts, If everyone is ready, let's start the countdown. The crowd shouts. 3. 2. 1. Go. The participants start cautiously, unsure how long each lap is. Each lap is about four and a half miles, but is a quite flat route, so not as bad as it could have been. Naghat finishes the first lap quite a bit in the lead, but looks quite tired. Kadrick is in second place and also looks quite tired. Maggie is third and looks like she could keep going all day. In last place is Lord who looks quite tired and ready to quit, until he hears a cheer for him from the crowd. By the end of the second lap, Maggie has a comfortable lead but she has started to tire. Still in second place is Kadrick who is beginning to struggle. Side by side is Naghat and Lord. Naghat begins to run the wrong way when he starts the third lap, but is corrected quickly and heads out the right way. By the end of the fourth lap, Maggie has lapped everyone, 
and Lord almost went the wrong way as he begins the next lap, as fatigue begins to overcome his brain. By the end of the fifth lap everyone is walking and Maggie finishes. Everyone else sighs as they have one more lap to do. Kadrick is doing quite bad and is barely standing, as he starts the final lap. Naghat is in even worse condition, and is only standing through sheer will. Lord is noticeably tired, but his lightness is clearly an advantage over such a long distance, and he is not as tired as the other two. Kadrick finishes second, and collapses once he crosses the finish line. One of the goblins rushes to him and gives him a potion, which removes all his exhaustion. Naghat is next to finish and goes to start another lap before he is informed, that he has finished. The orc stares off into the distance fatigue clearly overcoming his senses, as he tries to work out if he is being tricked. After drinking a potion given to him, his exhaustion clears, and he is relieved to know he has finished. Last to cross the finish line is Lord, who looks like he is just out for a leisurely stroll. When everyone has finished the goblin's shout, the winner is Maggie of the Stars of Katha. Maggie is given the medal of the long-distance runner. The medal is round and engraved with a rough map of Jigal, with a line going around it matching the course ran. When the crowd finishes cheering, one of the goblins shouts, the next event is on the riverbank and is the river dance. Everyone makes their way to the riverbank, and on the way Dolana smiles, this must be the dance-off. Though I hope we don't have to go into the river to perform. When everyone is at the riverbank, Elder Kaz shouts, can I have a participant from each team for the river dance? Dolana makes her way to the Elder, and is accompanied by Irvin, Haddon, and Lord. When he has four people standing beside him, Elder Kaz shouts, the next event is the river dance and will be two semifinals, followed by a final. The participants have to decide how many of their best moves they want to save for the final, but still need to make sure they get there. The first semi-final will be Dolana of the Scavengers against Haddon of the Dogs of War. The second semi-final will be Lord of the Jig Outlaws against Irvin of the Stars of Kaffir. Dolana begins dancing and starts using some of her best moves, as Haddon proves to be quite a competent dancer. However, it does not take long for the drow's two left feet to rear their ugly head, ending his chances of winning. Elder Kaz shouts, the winner of the first semi-final is Dolana of the Scavengers. Lord and Irvin begin dancing. Irvin easily wins as Lord just skips around the area waving his hands. Elder Kaz shakes his head, the winner is Irvin, now on to the final. Irvin and Dolana begin to dance and Dolana is clearly the better of the two, but Irvin not wanting to make it easy, and out of good moves starts improvising moves hoping they go well. They don't and he gets his feet in a tangle. Before it gets too embarrassing Elder Kaz shouts, the winner is Dolana of the Scavengers. Dolana is presented the medal of the dance. The medal is shaped like a dancer in mid-jump. When the crowd calms down, Elder Kaz shouts, the next event is at the Helter Skelter, and is the Raging Bull. As they make their way to the Helter Skelter, Dolana smiles, that's my five done. I hope the next events are favorable for you too. Clayda smiles, I hope they are as well, I still have to do three out of four remaining events. Kadrick rubs his beard, then you may want to do this one. Clayda nods, yes. Then at least if something comes up after this, that I am not suited for, we have choices. I have a bad feeling we are going to get an event that I won't like, and it will go badly. When they arrive at the Helter Skelter, a pen has been set up and there is a ball in it. Elder Ushru is standing beside the pen and shouts, can I have someone from each team to take part in this event? Clayda makes his way to the Elder and is joined by Io, Amalvin, and Ux. Elder Ushru shouts, this event is the raging bull all you have to do is stay on the back of the bull for as long as possible. Simple really. We have Clayda of the Scavengers, Amalvin of the Dogs of War, Ux of the Jig Outlaws and Io of the Stars of Katha. Clayda smiles to himself, at least it's not a horizon back tortoise. Ux is first up, and I am not sure his attempt counts, as he fell straight off. Amalvin is next up, and he manages to stay on for about 10 seconds before falling off. 
Clada is third, and lasts just over one minute. Io is last up, and as the time approaches one minute, Clada is impressed she has managed to hold on, but is relieved when she falls off as the minute is reached, but not past. Elder Ushru shouts, the winner of the Raging Bull is Clada of the Scavengers. Clada is presented with the Medal of the Raging Bull. A medal of a bull's head with red eyes that glow. Elder Ushru then shouts, the next event is the best pies and is at the Unbroken Tusk. As they make their way to the Unbroken Tusk, Dolana smiles, this is going to be an eating contest. I think a certain rotund member of the team, is ideal for this one. Kadric sighs, I guess but it will be my last event. Clada shakes his head, don't worry Kadric my friend. I will do this one, you are more suited for physical challenges than me, and with two more events after this, I am sure one of them is going to be physical. Kadric smiles, you are right Clada. When they arrive at the unbroken tusk, a stage has been set up outside with a long table and four chairs beside it. Agath the cook of the unbroken tusk is in charge of the event, and has personally cooked all the pies herself. Agath's pies are amongst the nicest in the whole of Wildmount, so quite a treat for those entering the pie-eating contest. Clader makes his way to the stage, and is followed by Irvin, Naghat, and Kyos. When all four are sat down, Agath shouts, this event is special to me. For this contest our four contestants must eat as many pies as possible, without throwing up. We have Clada of the Scavengers, Naghat of the Dogs of War, Kyas of the Jig Outlaws and Irvin of the Stars of Katha. A large pie is placed in front of each of the four contestants, and when they are finished a second is placed in front of them. Irvin gets halfway through the second, before he starts vomiting into a bucket under the table. The other three finish their second and third pie. Kyle's put up a good effort for a goblin, but collapses face first into the fourth pie, after only a couple of mouthfuls. Clader begins to struggle with the fifth pie, and when he sees Naghat finish his fifth, the wizard decides to call it a day as he is close to throwing up himself. Agath shouts, the winner is Naghat of the Dogs of War. Naghat is presented with the medal of the meat pie. The medal is shaped like a meat pie. Agath shouts, the next event is at the river and is called the plunge. As they make their way to the river, Clader smiles, I knew there would be another physical contest. Plus, I have always been told never to go for a swim after eating. Kadric smiles, if I'm going to get wet again, I hope my last event goes well. When they arrive at the river, people have begun gathering on the piers. As they stand around, Clader and Dolana overhear Io and Galceriad whispering to each other. Galceriad whispers in Io's ear, Are you sure you don't want me to cast Longstrider on you? Io clearly angry responds, Yes, it is unneeded at this point and would be cheating. The water Genesee storms off to the pier, where Ux and Naghat are waiting beside a goblin who is in charge of the event. Kadric follows Io and when all four contestants are ready, the goblin shouts, there is a spear stabbed into the ground under the river's water. Whoever gets the spear back here wins. Naghat rubs his knuckles in anticipation ready to fight whoever gets the spear first. The goblin hosting the event continues, the people about to take a plunge are Kadric of the Scavengers, Naghat of the Dogs of War, Ux of the Jig Outlaws and Io of the Stars of Katha. You may take your clothes and armor off if you wish but may come to regret it. None of the contestants take their armor off, knowing what the goblin is hinting at. When they all signal that they are ready the crowd begins the countdown. 3. 2. 1. And go. Io is quickest to dive into the water, and being a water genesee makes swimming up the river look easy. Ux is second into the water and swims as fast as he can, and covers an impressive distance, but still only half of what Io swam. Naghat is third into the water, and as he starts swimming, the pies finally begin to catch up to him, and he begins flowing back down the river toward Kadric, who swims past the rather pale-looking orc. Io dives under the water, and with a twist and a pull, gets a rather rusty spear free of the ground. As Naghat struggles back to the start line trying not to vomit, Kadric and Ux dive under the water, 
in time to see Aya retrieve the spear, and both notice that the bed of the river gets disturbed in the process, as a cave opens up in the riverbed, and a pair of Ifalan striped sharks swim out of it. One of the sharks bites at UX, and the goblin begins bleeding heavily and faints. The other attacks Kadrik, and the paladin is relieved that he kept his armor on, as it protects him from the shark's sharp teeth. As she swims away Io sees what has happened, and though she could get the spear back to shore with ease, she drops it and draws her own harpoon, as the spear she retrieved looked clumsy and unwieldy. Seeing Ux is in the most danger, Io swims towards him, and stabs at the shark attacking the goblin, who has begun to drown. Kadrik hits the shark attacking him with his javelin, but does little damage to it. Io stabs at the shark again, and kills it, the water genesee then grabs hold of Ux and gets the goblin to the surface, making sure his head is clear of the water, so he can breathe. On the shore, the crowd can see something is going wrong beneath the water. Clada then sees Io break the surface of the water, and notices that Ux is heavily injured, so casts a healing spell on the goblin, bringing him back to consciousness. Clada then casts a mage hand to pat Naghat on the back, as he climbs out of the water. The wizard smiles to himself, as he says to the orc, you shouldn't go swimming so soon after eating. Once on the pier, Naghat lies on his back breathing heavily, and can't be bothered to think of a rebuttal to say to the wizard. Meanwhile under the water, Kadrik realizing he is all alone against the shark, uses a piercing strike, heavily injuring the shark. The shark bites back, and Kadrik counters with another thrust of his javelin, killing it. Io gets back to the pier with Ux, and with the help of some of the crowd, they both get safely onto the pier. The danger now over, Kadrik swims down, and retrieves the spear and brings it back to the pier. There are a few minutes while everyone is standing around, shocked by the events they have just witnessed. A murmur spreads around the crowd, as Ux informs them what happened. Kadrik keeps a hold of the spear, and the goblin in charge of the event approaches him and smiles, I guess you won. When Kadrik does not respond to the comment, and after a moment, the goblin sighs before shouting, Kadrik of the scavengers is the winner of the plunge. The murmur of the crowd continues, as the goblin presents Kadrik with the medal of the conch. The medal is made of sea glass and shaped like a conch shell. Io approaches Kadrik and shouts to the crowd, the rules were clear, whoever gets the spear back to the pier wins. That is Kadrik. The crowd clap and cheer, but it seems flatter than previous events. The goblin hosting the event then shouts, we have one more event, before the final two teams are selected. Please make your way to the horizon back paddock for the event, one of the herd. Clader laughs ironically, I knew this was going to happen. I'm the only one left, and it would have to be an event involving damn horizon back tortoises. Dolana laughs, just make sure you don't get trampled this time. Clader sighs, easier said than done. When they get to the paddock, Dermot, Amalvin, and Kyos are waiting with the orc handler who is in charge of the event. The orc handler smiles as Clader approaches, don't worry, you won't be trampled today, that was a one-off I am certain of it. Not inspired with confidence from the orc's words, Clader smiles, I hope not. When the four have given the orc handler their names, he climbs onto the fence of the paddock and shouts, good day. We have one event left before two teams are eliminated. This one is quite simple, all the contestants have to do is herd the horizon back tortoises, from one side of the paddock to the other. The quickest one to do so wins. We have Clada of the Scavengers, Amalvin of the Dogs of War, Kyos of the Jig Outlaws and Dermot of the Stars of Katha. Kyos is first up, but quickly gives up on herding the large tortoises that tower over him. Amalvin is next, and does a respectable job getting all four tortoises to the other end, but Dermot makes it look quite easy in comparison, as he does it much quicker. Clader slightly nervous enters the paddock, and begins to grow in confidence as he gets one tortoise to the other side. His confidence takes a slight dent as he gets bumped by the second tortoise, before he gets it to the other side. The third proves easy, but the fourth is the one that trampled Clader the day before, and there is something about the wizard, it just does not like. 
The horizon back tortoise bumps Clada, but the wizard does not give in, and tries again, but the tortoise rears up and bumps him again, before biting him. Clada collapses unconscious to the floor. Seeing what happened, Dermot is quickest to react, and jumps into the paddock, as he casts a healing spell on Clada, bringing the wizard back to consciousness. Io also rushes into the paddock, and helps Clada back to his feet, as Cadric positions himself between Clada and the tortoise. Dolana then grabs some hay, and guides the tortoise away. Clada slowly moves the other way, and climbs out of the paddock shaking his head, I knew it. The orc handler walks up to Clada, and puts a hand on the wizard's shoulder, sorry, I don't know why he keeps doing that to you. When everyone is clear of the paddock, and the tortoises have calmed down, the orc handler shouts, the winner is Dermot of the Stars of Kaffa. Dermot is presented with the Medal of the Horizon back. The medal is shaped like a tortoise shell. The orc then shouts, with that, the events are over. The elders will discuss who has performed best, and choose two teams who will go on to the final event. If everyone could assemble at the staging area in an hour, the finalists will be announced. An hour later when everyone is at the staging area, Elder Cass stands on the stage and shouts, the final two teams will be the Scavengers and the Stars of Kaffa. The other teams performed well, and this is the first year, every team has won at least one event each. If everyone could follow me and Elder Ushru, we will go to the Emerald Grotto for the final event. The elders lead the two teams to the southeastern edge of Jigao, with what seems like the entire population in a procession behind them. The atmosphere is one of anticipation and excitement. When they reach the river, the teams follow the elders as they wade through the shallows, from one island to another. When they reach the smallest island, Elder Kaz places potions of water breathing at the feet of each contestant. Io approaches the fated and smiles, it appears we would be at an advantage. We have five against your three. In the interests of fairness, if you wish, we will have two members sit out, or you can ask for volunteers from the crowd.